this cold December day We are on our merry way Riding along just singing a song Barreling through the snow Bells are jingling, snowflakes tingling Rudolph knows where to go On this cold December day I am piloting my sleigh The work to be done on my Christmas run Is the most tired chore No girl or boy without a toy So giddy up, root of my dear have Totoro here out of uh, out of sabbatical he took a little break but <laughs> he's back I'm actually drinking uh, Lavazza this morning uh, espresso and I made an Americano and I put a uh, Shaga elixir in it it's so good it's one of my favorite ways to have coffee in the morning um, yeah and I've got my natural calm water here I'm gonna put on some of this skin aqua UV super moisture gel body. I'm going to put this on my body. I've been putting this on. I finished the Nivea Kids uh, water resistant sunscreen that I was using as a body sunscreen. And now I've been using this. I have a pump bottle of it that I keep at my desk <clears throat> um, for reapplication. Um, it goes on pretty well on the face, but I mostly just use it on my body. It's water resistant. It has Juvenal A plus and Juvenal T150 as well as Tinisorb in it and uh, one other filter that's escaping me. So it's got really good um, broad spectrum coverage. You know, here in the States, the only chemical filter that we have in our sunscreens is Ava Benzone. It's not particularly stable. Companies like Neutrogena and La Roche-Posay stabilize it so you get a little bit more reliable usage out of it, but it's still not perfect. However, sunscreens from Japan, Canada, Europe, they have Tinisorb, Juvenal A+. <clears throat> These filters have much, much broader coverage into the UVA wavelengths. UVA are the wavelengths of ultraviolet light that penetrate really deeply into the skin and age the skin. Um, so they have more reliable coverage for those wavelengths than what we have here in the States. The alternative is to rely on use it, zinc sunscreens, um, and zinc sunscreens leave a light cast. It's not desirable for everybody. And um, they also, depending on the size, you will lose some UVA coverage. You know, non nano size zinc provides more UVA coverage than nano size. So, basically, the more aesthetically pleasing a mineral sunscreen is, probably the less less broad spectrum it becomes. But, anyways, yeah, I really like this one. Um, I'm just putting a little here on my arms and hands um, before I go out. But uh, it doesn't leave a cast, it's not greasy. You can put it on your face. It does have alcohol denaturant in it, which is not bad. It helps to solubilize the filters and um, stabilize the ingredients. But if you have really sensitive skin, you might find that that's drying or irritating, but it doesn't bother me whatsoever. And overall, this is formulated really nicely. It's not super moisturizing, uh, but it's also not particularly drying. And it um, doesn't have any added fragrance. It doesn't have any, it's oil free. Uh, very minimal ingredients actually besides the filters and I love that you can get this usually in a pump bottle although they've been out on yes style lately I get my Japanese sunscreens on yes style because um, uh, they just tend to have a ton and a variety but anyways but yeah if I'm gonna do a chemical sunscreen I prefer to use a Japanese chemical sunscreen or a European or a Canadian because I would rather have those UVA filters that aren't approved for inclusion in sunscreens in the States. I'd rather have those filters to give really good, stable, reliable, and broad spectrum UVA coverage. The UVB part is really important. I don't want to underplay that, but that's not that challenging for a sunscreen to achieve. And the UVB protection of a sunscreen is, 
is what the SPF is telling you about. It doesn't, the SPF doesn't tell you anything about the UVA protection. Similarly, um, many of you ask me about the UV index that's reported. The UV index, likewise, only is a reflection or a measure of the UVB rays. It doesn't tell you anything about UVA rays. The majority of the ultraviolet radiation that comes to the Earth and reaches our skin is actually UVA. UVB is a small portion of that, still a very important portion to protect your skin from because it does damage the DNA in your skin cells, but also a big port a big portion of it that we neglect to to mention or you know in media you don't really hear about is UVA. Um, that's the majority of the ultraviolet radiation that comes to the Earth's surface damages our skin. For people who are on medica uh, many different medications interact with UVA and cause skin problems, rashes. Um, so UVA actually causes a lot more issue for people than they realize and it's really important to protect your skin from, from that. I also continue to get questions from you guys about vitamin D and sunscreen and there's no evidence that vitamin D deficiency is due to the use of sunscreen or that sunscreen use causes vitamin D deficiency. It's been a theoretical concern, but that has since been refuted. I'm gonna list my reference down below in the description box and showing that sunscreen use, even, even sunscreen, if people actually use sunscreen the way they're supposed to, which they don't, even using it the way you're supposed to would not result in vitamin D deficiency. Um, vitamin D synthesis in the skin is is due to UVB, which as I mentioned is a very small portion of what actually hits our skin. Uh, so in order to get uh, vitamin D synthesis from the skin, you really have to expose your skin to very dangerous levels of ultraviolet radiation. And there's also some studies showing that the amount of UVA in ambient sun exposure, in sun exposure um, can actually <laughs> impair vitamin D synthesis in the skin. So while you have the UVB that would activate it, uh, it actually can, the UVA dosage is so high, it degrades some of, of that mechanism in the skin. So it's advised that you, uh, if you are vitamin D deficient or in, have vitamin D insufficiency, that you talk with your doctor about how to replace that. But sun exposure is simply not a safe way to get vitamin D. It's simply not. It's not safe and it's not effective. I mean, it's not an efficient, effective way to do it. Like, it's kind of wasting your time to attempt to get vitamin D from the sun. But speaking of vitamins, um, I don't take this as a vitamin or a supplement or anything. I just became kind of curious in it. Uh, it's the Cebu drink that I've been drinking. I got another bottle of it, you guys and I'm gonna have a shot. For those of you who are new, this is my sea buckthorn berry juice. Um, it's rich in omega-7 um, fatty acids, so I like to take this, and it tastes terrible, but I have to tell you all, I'm on my fourth bottle of it, and I've kind of developed a taste for it. I was diluting it um, in a little bit of, of carrot ginger juice for a while there to develop kind of a, a threshold of a tolerance for it and now I like drinking it straight. Um, so yeah, this has omega-7 uh, fatty acids in it. So yeah, I have a video talking about sea buckthorn in skincare products because you all had been asking me a lot about that. And when I was learning about sea buckthorn oil and sea buckthorn berry, I became fascinated by buy it and I wanted to try taking it and ingesting it and you can buy the dried berries like on Amazon but I started getting this juice and I've developed a taste for it so I continue to take a little shot glass of it. So yeah I'm going to take a shot glass of it but I just have my classy pal bib here. This is my adult bib. I highly recommend getting one of these. They are a shirt saver, but the reason I'm putting it on is because I had a bottle of this, you guys, and it's bright orange. You'll see in a moment. And I was shaking it up, but I didn't realize that the lid was not on. 
Um, like I, I set it down on my counter and the lid wasn't on, wasn't screwed on and I picked it up and I sh like started shaking it and it went all over the place, like all over my floor. I probably lost a good third of the bottle. And had I not been wearing this classy pal bib, um, I would have ruined my shirt. I was wearing, of course, a white shirt that day. And it's like bright orange too, you'll see in a minute. So yeah, I totally recommend these uh, if you like, it just saves my wardrobe and it saves me uh, from making making a fool out of myself all the time. I mean, it doesn't completely save me from that, let's be honest, but it helps. <laughs> it helps. Yeah, they make great gifts. I have a coupon code um, that the company gave me that you're more than welcome to use. I'll list it down below in the description box. Yeah, but I get Cebu on iron. Whoa, this particular Cebu is kind of thick. Let's give it a shake. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any shy glasses, so I've just been using these little um, jars from my Frontier Co-op spices that I, I save the, the jars from my spices and just wash them, so it's like my little Cebu shot glass. But I do about this much in the morning and then I'll take it again in the evening. And I mean, I don't know why I'm taking it. I, I just kind of enjoy it, <laughs> to be honest with you guys. So here we go, bottoms up. Yeah, I've developed a taste for it. You guys remember when I first tried it? It was too tart. It's really tart. If you like sour things, I might try cooking with it sometime. Cause I think it would be really good like cut with some other things, seasonings um, and whatnot, something to kind of balance out the tartness. Oh, I love it though. It's supposed to be good for your, your total body health. But a word of warning, when I first started taking it, it does kind of make you a little nauseous. So be wary of that. I'm not aware of any adverse side effects of taking sea buckthorn other than that it can upset your stomach a little bit yeah it has 269 milligrams of omega-3 721 milligrams of omega-7 and 214 milligrams of omega-9s and for someone who follows a plant-based diet i don't eat fish so finding those omegas i get them from like chia seeds and black seeds but I have to be conscientious that I'm ingesting them. Although I've gotta be frank with you guys. When I was an omnivore, I definitely, I don't think I consumed that many omegas in my diet because I didn't eat fish very often, <laughs> like, if, like if at all. I, I hate salmon. I always detested the taste of salmon. Um, so I, I don't think I ever ate that many omega fatty acids. I think I'd probably eat more now that I'm plant-based, that I eat a vegan diet than I did back then. Well, hey guys, what's up? It is late afternoon. I'm headed out to get my groceries for the week. And uh, I wanted to update you all on my Function of Beauty shampoo and conditioner. I am still really enjoying that stuff. Uh, I, I'm close to finishing up that Acure Peppermint shampoo and conditioner that I had had prior. <clears throat> and uh, the Function of Beauty one, I think is superior for sure. I love that it's fragrance free and dye free but uh it just seems to last a really long time like I don't need if I, I find I don't I don't know I don't need as much of it or you know what it is I think it's that the pump is more uh conscious at dispensing sometimes if you have a bottle and you turn it upside down and give it a squeeze you end up getting a big blob out more than you know you might actually need you don't even realize it so I find that this puts out you know pumps out a, a very uh 
conscientious amount of product, just enough, really, all, you, all that you need. So it's lasting a long time. It doesn't foam, which I, I think is, is just fine. You know, foam is one of those things that is really just a marketing kind of thing. It, you know, it's, it's more of a sensory experience. It doesn't equate to any actual cleansing. And a lot of foaming agents, uh, you know, people can be irritated by them and not. But, uh, you know, foam, so, there's something gratifying about foam. I'll give it that. Uh, you know, you feel like, am I really cleansing my scalp? The challenge with shampooing, you know, people, people want to put things oftentimes into this good, bad category. And it's really, it's really not like that. It's, it's more on a continuum of, of uh, pluses and minuses. So, uh, you know, there's some challenges with cleansing, with shampooing. And, you know, as, as much as I harp on skincare companies and all of their gimmicky claims, I gotta hand it to shampoo and conditioner formulators because it, it's more, it, it's a science. It really is a science. Because here, here in the, here in is the challenge. You have one body part where you have two components of a different pH and with different needs. The aim of cleansing, of shampooing, should be to cleanse largely the scalp of sebum, any products that may have built up oil, sebum is oil, uh, dirt, what have you, to cleanse that and remove it. And it's really important, it's really an important part of hygiene. So the no shampooing philosophy is, is not great. Uh, in my opinion, in, in the opinion, I mean, ask any dermatologist, they'll tell you the more frequently you can shampoo your hair, shampoo, the better off the health of the skin of your scalp is going to be. <clears throat> because the scalp has a very high density of sebaceous oil glands. It has a very high density of malassezia yeasts that live up there and hang out. Um, you know, they're not dangerous, but they can get overly comfortable and lead to problems, namely seborrheic dermatitis, uh, AKA dandruff, that can then kind of trickle down onto your face, cause seborrheic dermatitis on your face, itchy rashes, exacerbate rosacea, etc. So cleansing the scalp is really important for keeping that dude in check and removing sebum, and build up. A lot of people think that because they have dandruff, they equate that to a dry scalp. It's actually the opposite. Dandruff is a seborrheic, seborrheic dermatitis. It's a dermatitis due to oiliness. Uh, and so cleansing the scalp is really an important part of keeping that in check. However, shampooing comes with, with the insult to your hair shaft. It can dry out the hair shaft. <clears throat> and damage the hair shaft and change it, you know, alterations, what, what you're aiming for, what your scalp can tolerate for good cleansing, your hair shaft can't necessarily hack. So shampoo manufacturers, they have to, um, I mean, it's really a science in not only balancing out the pH overall so it doesn't destroy your hair shaft, but also in uh, condi providing conditioning agents, emollients, humectants, etc., that are gonna coat the hair shaft and protect it from that. But all of those ingredients, while they help combat and, and, and protect the hair from the insult that is cleansing, uh, what they end up doing is leading to a buildup. They, they can cause a buildup depending on the ingredient. For example, uh, water insoluble silicones will lead to a buildup on the hair shaft that has to be removed with a, a more harsher detergent, a more harsher shampoo that can then dry out the hair shaft. It's really, really challenging. and. Not only that, but manufacturers have to have to have to actually target uh, different hair types. You know, the skincare marketing is really largely kind of gimmicky with their combination skin, oily skin. A, a lot of products, you know, can be many people. You, you don't have to have a certain skin type to use them. In other words, and but manufacturers would be like, oh, but we can take this essentially the same product and put it into different bottles and market it to different people. When really the product could could go over well with more universally. Uh, but with shampoo, with hair care products, it's not that way. There are ethnic differences in the hair shaft diameter, hair density, hair texture, etc. And we all have different hair types that tolerate and need different things. You know, I mean, I've got straight hair. What I do to cleanse my scalp and to, to take care of my hair is not going to work for a lot of people. It's just not. Um, so. 
you know, it's I shampoo my hair daily because I like to keep my I like to remove the sweat from working out, the oil, the sebum, etc., from my scalp. And my hair shop tolerates that just fine. I use a conditioner, it's fine, it works for me. But that's not gonna work for for women of color of African descent, for example. They can't tolerate your hair shop will not tolerate the hair shop will not tolerate that. Uh, so you know shampooing the scalp. Uh, cleansing the scalp, you know, needs to be done less frequently. So there's not a good, bad, like is shampooing good, is shampooing daily bad, good, bad. No, it, it's more nuanced than that. Like some hair types are going to tolerate it and the benefit of cleansing the scalp uh, outweighs any damage to the hair shop. Whereas other, other hair types, the benefit to not washing on the hair shaft outweighs the oiliness and seborrheic problems in the scalp. And so it's kind of, it's very, very, very subtle differences from individual to individual. So when people try and tell you this is bad, this is good, you know, no, it's actually more complicated than that. And then throw in color treated hair. Now color, treat, color treating the hair, heat styling the hair, that all introduces new, new needs and whatnot. Uh, you know, when you when you color treat the hair, you essentially destroy the outer layer of the hair shaft. So it, it's it's much more fragile. And then you have the goal of protecting your investment of the hair. You know, the the color treatment that that is a that's an investment of your you know financial resources. So you don't want to you don't want to use a shampoo that's going to accelerate the rate at which that goes away or what have you, depending on the type of hair color. But yeah, it's complicated. So I. You know, I I kind of applaud shampoo and conditioner manufacturers because they really have their, their work cut out for them. I mean, that's not to say that making a face wash isn't hard or anything, but I mean, it doesn't have to be that complicated at the end of the day. I mean, very basic ingredients will work for the majority of people and the more stuff that manufacturers go doing to the product, the more often it leads to problems for people. Um, whereas in shampoo and conditioners, they do kind of have to get they do kind of have to get a little advanced as far as catering to different hair types uh, to meet their needs. All right, so it was super busy in Costco today, so I didn't film in there, but uh, it was a pretty typical grocery haul for me. I got my stir fry vegetable blend and my rice cauliflower. I also went back to you, my good old friend Boscovich. It's been a few weeks since I since I've had that. I've been doing the power greens, but I decided to go back to spinach. Um, I also got these, they're so good. Uh, these little snacking cucumbers, they are addictive. <laughs> I got Sunkissed Delights little mandarins. I really enjoy these in the morning. Uh, uh, I've been having those daily harvest smoothies, they're really good. But I like taking a few orange, mandarin orange slices and putting them on top. I just think it kind of gives a little, I don't know, something special. <laughs> And I also got the Wild Mushroom Co. Dried Gourmet Mixed Mushrooms. I love this stuff so much. And I think I'm gonna stock up the next time I go to Costco and get more of them because they stopped carrying it uh, after, kind of after the holidays oftentimes. Black Trumpet Oyster Portobello and Slippery Jack. Yeah, no cremini. <laughs> I love Slippery Jack. So yeah, it's really good in the slow cooker. Uh, I also got Hearts of Palm from Costco. I love Hearts of Palm, they're really good. And um, I've been making uh, like a pasta salad with the bonza chickpea pasta, and I like doing some artichoke hearts. But I think, think I'm gonna change it up and do Hearts of Palm, so that'll be tasty. I got two white onion and then a zucchini. I, uh, I've really been into shredded zucchini as a salad. I know it sounds odd, but it tastes really good. Um, so I've been jiving on that. Then through Ibotta, which if you're not familiar with Ibotta, it's that rebate app that I use to buy when I buy groceries. Um, one of the many rebate apps I'm into. Uh, but Ibotta had a thing where you get pink lady apples, so you can get cash back on that. So I got that at Kroger. Then I also got parsley. I've been finding that goes really well with the zucchini salad that I've been into lately. Um, I got two spaghetti squash, been really into that as of late as well. And three chayote, um, I got three parsnips and two carrots, some radishes, whole cauliflower, 
and iceberg lettuce, a uh, head of cabbage, and some bean sprouts. So yeah, that's all the produce for the week. And then I also got some of these little Bustello instant to-go sticks. I really enjoy these. And my uh, Dentec Easy Brush. These are, an, uh, these are a dental essential for me. So yeah, I didn't get any like thing other than produce this week because last week, if you'll recall, I got that massive bag of lupin flour. I also have like a ton of tofu that I need to make my way through. And I have all of those lentils and all of those hemp seeds. So yeah, I, I really don't buy that stuff weekly, but I do buy produce weekly, so. So yeah, that's everything I got at Kroger and Costco this week. I hope you all enjoyed today's vlog. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.